Joining me now to discuss some of the major G10 currencies and give a general outlook on the FX market is Rani Jaban, head of Treasury at Arab Bank in Switzerland. Rani, thank you very much for coming into the studio. Oh, thank you for receiving me. Now, in terms of an investment perspective, in your opinion, what have been the worst and best performing currencies so far this year? I mean, the best performing currencies so far this year, if you take into account the return, is the high yielding currencies will be that been punished in the end of last year that because of what is considered their weak fundamentals and on top of them is the Hungarian foreign and you find in, the, in this pack you find the South African rand, the Turkish lira, mm -hmm. uh, the Mexican peso. People were looking for yield because of the return of the risk on environment uh, and uh, the currencies that were sold off last year because of weak fundamentals are the ones that have gained most uh, this year. If you don't take into account the high yielding, also the, the on the precious metals, silver has gained around 15%, platinum 17% mm -hmm. so far this year. Again, uh, it's a correction of what happened at the end of last year. So uh, the risk on environment, uh, the excess of liquidity that we've seen in the market, has created this rush for high yielding currencies, emerging market investments, and uh, a return to precious metals. Okay. Now, in regards to euro, it's been interesting to see the euro being traded and used as a funding currency, similar to the traditional US dollar and Japanese yen. Now, are we beginning to see a change in the euro's role in the currency market? I don't think it's a change in the euro's role. I mean, euro is still one of the the main, uh, well, a competitor as a reserve currency for the dollar. But the thing is, is just because interest rates are so low and um, the long-term liquidity injection or, done by the ECB has created that there's a number of there's too much euro now in the market and uh, interest rates on the short term are very low on euros. So this is why, I mean, it's logical to use it as a, as a funding currency like the dollar was used mm -hmm. or the yen also. Of course. Now going back to emerging markets and their currencies, Brazil, for example, mm -hmm. they've accused developed countries like the US and Europe of creating a monetary tsunami and yeah. they're blaming them, of course, for the reason they've seen massive gains in their currency. What, what's your view on this? That's the famous currency war. Uh, turns, all over um, again. All over again. I mean, th they're a victim of their own success in a way. It's true. They are right that because uh, they are the most developed uh, economy in Latin America, they have a huge potential, fundamentals are really good, that uh, flows and they have a a uh, big difference, uh, the yield also effect is very important when you talk Brazil against the dollar, Brazil against Euro. So that's why people are rushing into Brazilian, into the Brazilian currency. Mm -hmm. And it's true, we discussed it in point one, uh, it's created the risk on the injection of liquidity by the Americans, by the European Central Bank, has created the risk on effect and a, and a, and a run for the yield. And Brazil is one of the most uh, successful stories uh, macroeconomically in the last 10 years and it is still has a huge potential um, but it's true that the, this excess of liquidity the fact that China is still more or less controlling uh, the inflows and most of the Asian countries are also very careful mm -hmm. about that put uh, too much pressure on Brazil and uh, that's why they are still looking to intervene uh, more or less verbally to not to increase interest rates too much mm -hmm. um, and they are right to complain about it I mean but it is also they are uh, victims of their own success it's the problem when you're having a very successful economy mm -hmm. and a high yielding uh, currency of course now moving on to commodity currencies the signs of a slowdown in china they're starting to weigh on commodity linked mm -hmm. currencies the australian dollar new zealand mm -hmm. dollar canadian dollar and a lot of the decline is being led by the aussie dollar what's your outlook for some of the commodity linked currencies as we head into the second quarter of 2012 I think as as long as we have this slowdown, I mean hard landing, soft landing, whatever it is, 
in China, the commodity currencies will continue to suffer. They've been overvalued in a way because of their link to, to the export, in this, uh, the commodity export to, to China. Um, and I think we will have a, um, a correction on these currencies, a continuing correction of what we've seen. And um, probably the Australian dollar will go down to, to test the parity again. Now moving on to dollar yen, there's been some interesting developments in this pair, especially considering as well the heavy flows into foreign bonds. Now at the moment the yen is trading at around 82 against the US mm -hmm. dollar. The uptrend seems to be intact for the moment, but how lo much longer is this yen weakness likely to last? I think it will, will continue. We're still in the uptrend. The uptrend hasn't been challenged mm -hmm. yet. We are in a period of consolidation. I think we'll probably go to 86. And by the way, yen has been the worst performer. Uh, yes. Since the beginning of the year to date, is minus six percent against the dollar, six point six percent. So, it's a f combination of factors. The fact that long-term interest rates in in U.S. dollars have been increasing a little bit, the the improving uh, data coming out of the U.S., the fact that we've seen uh, actually worsening data coming from Japan, mm -hmm. the risk-on effect because uh, yen was considered is considered as a safe haven currency. All these combination, the risk on, the excess liquidity, uh, the improving uh, picture in the US um, and long-term interest rate spreads have all combined for uh, a weakening of the yen. And I think this, is, this environment will probably continue in the next three months and that will push dollar yen back to 86. Rani, thank you very much for coming into the studio. Thank you. There is plenty more to check out on Duke's Copy TV, so make sure you stay tuned. Goodbye for now.